exercise 15, cavity and core creation for mold making. With this exercise, we're going to go ahead and explore some of the mold tools. So let's go to File, Open, and open your exercise 14 part that we completed last week. If you don't have it, you could go into the Sample Files folder, go to Exercise 14, and find the Exercise 14 finished part, and open that and use that instead. Now let's go to File, New, Assembly, and Open. Select the Exercise 14 part, and just hit the green check mark. We're going to go ahead and save this as E15. Save it on my desktop. And now we're going to go and insert a new part. So under Insert Components, it's a little arrow. Go to New Part and select the top plane. Now if it goes to this transparency setting, it's not a big deal. But if you don't like it, you can always go to the Options menu. Under Display Selection, turn off Force Assembly Transparency with the best of both worlds, which is Maintain Assembly Transparency. Also, since we're editing this new part, go to File, Save As, hit OK, and call this E15 Cavity. Save. Okay, for the cavity, we're going to go ahead now, and we are already sketching on the top plane. We'll just go Normal 2. Take the Rectangle tool. And drag out your rectangle. Parameters for the rectangle are as follows 20 by 10 in dimension 2.5 by 2. So go smart dimension. Be 20 by 10. And then from this edge, be 2. And from this origin to this edge, 2.5. And now you can just go to Features, Extrude Boss. This will be 6 inches high. And now the part is enveloped inside the block. At this point, we can now bring up some of the mold tools. And actually, we're going to go to the pull down and look for cavity. Tools, I should say insert, mold tools, and find cavity. The design component is actually going to be the part that's inside that block, so we have to hit this little plus symbol here and select the exercise 14 finished. Now we have the ability to scale it about the mold base origin or the components origin. We're just going to go with components origin, and you could put in a different scaling percentage. Now, in other CAD systems, typically, if you're going to have a shrinkage compensation factor of like, uh, you'd normally put in like 1.006 for 6 thousandths inch per inch shrink. Uh, here, you actually put in 0.6, so you're basically just moving the decimal place 2 to the right and putting in that number. But we're not going to put any scaling on here. Hit the green check mark to apply. And now it wants to know what bodies do we want. I'm going to go with select the body. And I want the outside cavity, so it's body one checked. The other two I don't need. I'm just going to hit OK. Now if we pull that part out, to go to features, actually uh, turn off that component, and under assembly, exploded view, we should be able to pull this part out. And there's our cavity. Let's cancel that. Let's bring a core in and create a core. So on our insert component, new part, and you could just select the this top surface right here. 
or sketching on it, we'll just take the parameters of the old mold, hit Convert Entities, go to Features, Extrude Boss. We're going to extrude this one inch in this direction for the base, and then we're going to go ahead and go to Direction 2 up to this vertex I just selected. So we're enveloping everything at this point. We'll go to File, File, Save As, and rename this part as well. This will be called E15 Core. Now again, we go to Insert, Molds, Cavity, and the design components will be both the Exercise 14 Finished and the E15 Cavity. With the green check mark, apply. I will turn off that component, and let's see what we have here. We'll go to Exploded View, click on this part here, and unfortunately, it's not what I had planned to do. Let's see. I'm going to edit that component here. Insert molds cavity. Okay, the two design components we select. Okay, now that worked. Turn off that component. Explode a view. There's our core. And here's our cavity. Let's collapse that and we'll save it. Now we can make a drawing from it. We're just going to drop it on a, a landscape. Bring in the front, top, and an isometric. For the isometric, I know I want it exploded, so I'll right click and show an exploded state. Now, what I'm going to do is create some section views. So I'm going to go ahead and view layout, section view. And cut through here. Turn on auto hatching and hit OK. All right, and at this point we could turn on the hidden lines. but not for this view. The next thing I want to do is for these drawing views is I want to go ahead and set up some layers. So I'm going to go Layer Properties and hit New about four times. Layer 4, we'll call that the Core. We'll make that red. Layer 3. We'll make that the cavity. We'll make that blue. Layer 2. We'll make that green. And that will be the part. Okay, and at this point I just hit OK. And now I could select individual parts from the feature tree. And the finished part, I just right click on. And I go to Component Line Font. I turn off Use Document Fonts. And set the layer. In this case, this is the part. And we could change it to a thicker visible edge if we want. Hit OK. Now go to the Cavity Component Line Font. Turn off use document fonts. 
and that will be the cavity. And then finally, for the core, component line font, turn off use document font, and select the core. I'm going to also go back to the layers, and there's an extra layer here. And I'm going to set that to balloons. Change that to magenta. And now make sure that I'm in there. I actually just double click on it to get the little arrow. Hit OK. I could select this view and go to annotation and auto balloon. And they should come up as magenta. Also, the table, since I'm still in that color, I'll go to table and select the view and put in the bill of materials, and that should come up magenta as well. And that completes exercise 15.